Hello everyone, my name is Lanceo90 and welcome to my review video for uh, Star Wars Rogue One. As usual with these kinds of review videos about things, I uh, record the uh, gameplay in advance and then I uh, do a voiceover over it. But it's not on um, script, because I don't do that. <laughs> so it's not going to be 100% cohesive, but you'll just have to bear with me. So what do I think of Rogue One? This might surprise you, considering some of my other more recent Star Wars opinions I've been having. But uh, I actually loved it quite a bit. Um, you see it here, I have to go into the controls because the game's ancient and uses control systems that were not really using anymore in real life. But anyway, yes, I actually uh, love the movie a lot. Um, to start with the good stuff, uh, visually amazing. Being able to see our favorite Star Wars ships from the original uh, series era of it. Uh, being able to see those in like fully rendered graphics. I don't know if all the, if any of the models were CG or if they were real. They probably used a mix of both, I imagine. But uh, being able to see a Star Destroyer in like really amazing clarity was just amazing. I loved it. Basically nerd porn. <laughs> uh, so that was very, very awesome, and that, that pretty much goes for everything. Star Destroyers just stood out the most, but the Death Star itself, the uh, ATSTs, like basically anything Imperial, but also the uh, Rebel Fighters, like the X-Wings and stuff, they of course look awesome as well. And uh, going off that note, the other awesome thing about this movie was there's a space battle again. I... uh... I don't know what level of spoilers I want to get into for this video. Because, for one thing, you know how this movie's gonna end, right? You know how episode 4 starts. So you have a pretty good idea of how this video, ha or this episode, has to end. Not an episode, it's a Star Wars story. But yeah, that said, you make your best guess about how the movie ends, and I'll tell you you're right. You're, you're probably right. That said, I'm just going to go ahead and say spoiler warning, because I'm just going to kind of get into spoilery details, but again, I don't think it's too important with this movie, because you know how it ends. <laughs> so, uh, yes, there's a big old space battle. It's awesome. We have Mon Calamari cruisers. I don't think it was like their actual... It wasn't, it wasn't Home 1 or anything. They have a very large uh, Mon Calamari ship, and... Nebulon B frigates, um, brilliant corvettes are all there. They're all fighting the uh, Star Destroyers. I think the only disappointing thing about that was it was only Star Destroyers for the Empire as far as capital ships went. I didn't see any Victory Destroyers or uh, Super Star Destroyer for that matter. Basically just Star Destroyers. So that was a little bit disappointing. They also have their TIE Fighters, of course. I don't think there is any TIE Interceptors. But on the ground, there is, like, a different TIE Fighter that's built for, like, atmospheric fight. Which was kind of cool, but, yeah, it's whatever. So the Rebels kind of had the, uh, upside in this one for having awesome ships, uh, on screen. Of course, the Star Destroyers looked amazing, but it's just disappointing that there wasn't more, uh, different kinds. Um, it's visuals, amazing. Uh, I don't know if they had, like, actors that looked exactly like the old actors, or if they were fully CGI, uh, actors, or if it was a combination of both again. But, uh, everyone, I'm clicking furiously, I didn't realize it didn't have the game muted. Or my microphone muted until later into the video, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. Oh well. I'll figure it out later. But, uh... A command post has fallen to our enemies. But, yes, uh, where was I? I got distracted. I got distracted with this. Um... Yeah, the, all the actors, or all the old uh, characters that we got to see again in this one, all of them were absolutely amazing. I don't know if they had actual actors, like I said, or if they didn't, but, um, 
they were amazing. Grand Moff Tarkin, whoever voiced him or played him, was like a hundred percent right on target with Grand Moff Tarkin. It was amazing. Uh, this movie is definitely uh, definitely makes you eat the member berries, but in this this time I think it's a good kind of uh, eating the member berries. I have to uh, agree with South Park, of course, if you saw my last uh, Force Awakens video. You know, I did not like Force Awakens. I hated it. Because it was redoing the same thing as Episode 4, but it wasn't Episode 4. Which was a little silly. This one, it's like, okay, this is right before Episode 4. So, it, it has every right to retread ground. It's not like, uh... Not like, um... Jeez, I just said it and I already forgot the freaking name. The Force Awakens. <laughs> Force Awakens didn't really have an excuse to retread water like they did. This one, this one's just um, eat the member berry fest. And it was definitely worth eating the member berries on that one. Uh, what else could be positive? Uh, a lot of the characters in the Rogue Run group are actually very cool. The uh, monk let me grab my book. I can't remember people's names. I'm really bad with people's names. I have a, a guide here. Let me get the monk's name. Oh. Oh, jeez. I'm not going to be able to say his name. Turut and we? Probably wrong. The true believer? He was a freaking badass. He's the. Force monk. He's not a Jedi, but like extremely in tune for the Force. Um, I am one with the Force. The force is me. I'm one with the Force. The Force is with me. I'm one with the Force. The force is with me. That guy's awesome. And his uh, best friend, uh, heavy weapons dude, is also awesome. Here we go, clicking my crazy again. Uh, Baze Malbus. He was also pretty awesome. That said, I think it's fair time to start getting into- oh wait, but more the best character in the show. Uh, KT- or K2SO, the uh, Imperial uh, droid that they reprogrammed. He is amazing. He is the best thing about the movie. If you watch, if you watch this movie for any reason, watch it for K2. Uh, my favorite meme that's come out of this is- uh, the, uh, you know, the meme, the, uh, you versus the guy she tells you not to worry about, and it's C-3PO is you, and the guy you're not supposed not to worry about is K-2. It's, oh, he was awesome. So, going into the negative side of things, most of the other characters, if they weren't the ones I just listed, or if they weren't... The old characters that have been redone. All the other characters were pretty shit. Jyn Erso, the main character, oh, it's just generic British brunette again. Like every single show has to do now for some reason. It's bad, not good. There's like no reason for her to even be there. You could replace her with any character and it'd be the same story. The, uh, facto leader of Rogue One, I guess, the, uh, captain. I have to look up names again, because I'm horrible with names. This is not very good. He was just, uh, another copy. Copy of, uh, Han Solo. Cassian Andor. Not, not very interesting. Tried to make him edgy, and it just didn't really come off as very edgy. Um, other characters that were bad. There was some director that uh, Grand Moff Tarkin steals the Death Star from, basically. He was boring. Jin's father. Again, we'll probably get a little bit more into spoilers here. Jin's father helps design the Death Star. I guess he could have been interesting, but we never see him really. We see him a little tiny bit, and we see him in the 
most cliche scene in the whole movie. All right, here's here's your first huge spoiler. So quit now. If you don't care, but it's not really gonna matter much. He dies uh, in a very very predictable scene. That's uh, I probably could have read it when I was five. It is really bad and really corny. But oh well, that was one of the worst writing moments in the show. Um, but yeah, he's the designer of the Death Star, and more spoilers. He's the one who builds the, uh, the flaw in the Death Star that the, the uh, life support tube that runs all the way to the core. That explains a lot of good stuff, like that was a really good thing for them to do, I think, trying to explain why the Death Star has this huge weakness. It's like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Doesn't really explain why the second Death Star has it, but I guess you can just blame that on it being incomplete. <laughs> um, what else? Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, well, if you watch Matt Pat's game theory, he had the best theory I had ever seen for what the Star Wars movie could have been was that the Rogue One team becomes the Knights of Ren. And you can one-to-one -one match the characters up with the Knights of Ren. It made 100% sense. After you just listen to some of the... go through it, it's like, oh, okay, that... that's probably definitely what happens. No. That's, there's no possibility of that happening, basically. I mean, they could do it, but it'd be very cringy. Because... Alright, next big spoiler. At the end of the movie, uh, Death Star fires fires its laser using only one reactor to destroy the place where the uh, Rogue One team is. Uh, so they're all dead. They're all super super dead. For a moment, it seemed like maybe they could have got out of it just being captured, like the uh, trailers. Let me get down to the minute. Like it's very heavily implied in the trailers that. Uh, they get captured. They don't. They they get knocked out at first. Like a few of them, like as they take their injuries, you're like, okay, he could have survived that. He could have been captured. One dude gets pretty heavily blown up, so it's like, oh no, he's probably not coming. But uh, then the Death Star fires its laser, and it's like, okay, um, they're dead. They're like super super dead. Like, there's not, not there's not gonna be anything left of them. So, uh, yeah, that theory's gone. I don't know if they just decided to do that after they saw this theory and they were like, oh shit, we need to change it so people don't know what's gonna happen. But, uh... uh kinda boring, because that was actually a really cool theory. I would love that to be true. It made so much sense. And it would have been a great way to tie into the new franchise, but I guess they do that. Unless they literally remake the Mites and Ren out of dust. But that's probably not gonna happen, because they're like they're like more dead than Shepard was <laughs> in Mass Effect. <laughs> so I don't think they can do that. I don't think Star I don't think Star Wars is that advanced to pull that off. Um and Darth Vader just had limbs cut off, that's why he was able to be restored. And even they had some difficulty with getting him back to life. And he was only hanging on because of because of the force, basically, so. I don't think these guys are gonna come back. <laughs> um other writing problems. Um They try they almost get it right with uh how the Tant of Four or ten to five, I think it's four. four. How it gets the uh, Death Star plans transmission. Like also, if you watch the I past game theory, he talks about well, you know, no, no one's getting a lot, getting out of this alive because why would they be going after the Rogue One team? Or why would they be going after transmissions in uh, Episode Four if uh, Rogue One team then uh, was uh, wasn't already captured or dead? So. They try to make it make sense, but it made sense to me at, at first, and then I thought about it, and I was like, wait a minute. So, 
a guy passes through the physical physical data disk to a guy through the other side of the door because Vader's about to kill him. And he gets it through the Tantive 5. But if you listen to what Darth Vader says in Episode 4, so we detected that this ship received transmissions. Um, compared to what happens in the movie, which is he sees the dude hand it to another dude physically onto the Tantive 4. Like, Darth Vader wasn't like a hundred percent sure that the Death Star clans were on Tantive 4 in Episode 4. He was just very trying to intimidate them, intimidate it out of them, and Leia was trying to convince him, though, it's not here, but there's, like, no freaking way Darth Vader didn't know that they're on, that they're definitely on the ship, and that it's not, like, <laughs> you know. So that's a little bit of a odd plot hole, because you think they would have been able to think of that, but I guess they just didn't have the creative juices left by the end of the movie to figure that one out. Um... I think that covers just about everything. Like I said, overall, I did love the movie. This has some bad writing moments in it. Uh, one more bad writing moment at the very end, for some random reason, they try to make uh, Jin and uh, Captain Andor fall in love, and they hadn't been in love the entire movie. And it hadn't even been like. 30 kind of stuff, like uh, Tom and Leia did. There's just like no build up to it at all, so it was very horny. And also, uh, Jin had a lightsaber crystal necklace. It's like, oh, well, that's probably gonna end up being the crystal that Luke makes uses to make his second lightsaber. That was one of my first, that was my first theory as soon as I saw it. I was like, oh, that's, that makes a lot of sense, that's really cool. Because <laughs> the Death Star fucks them up. Like, really fucks them up, so. That, that crystal doesn't survive that. <laughs> Would have been awesome, but. No. Well, just another missed opportunity. A lot of missed opportunities in this movie. Ah! Leads me back to a point I almost made before. Which was, uh. The trailers! What? They're ex so misleading. It's ridiculous how misleading they are. Like I said, watch Matt Pat's theory video. It makes so much sense. He's like, ah, look at, they're saying when they catch you, not if they catch you. What will you do when they break you? Like, whoa, these guys are going to get captured. Whoa. No. That scene isn't even in the movie. He doesn't even say that at any point in the movie. That's never said. And they'd never get captured. So I was like, what? Why was that in the trailer? That doesn't make any sense. None of the characters even tempted by the dark side in the movie, so it's very... Very weird that they... They change it. Like, if it hadn't... MatPad had made this... This, uh, theory, like, a few months ago... I probably would have been like... Okay, they saw this theory video and they decided they don't want it to be that predictable, so they're gonna throw it out. But no, like he made this movie, or they made that prediction like a week before it came out, so they don't they wouldn't have had time to toss it out. So uh Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. There was another part in the movie that or trailer that didn't show up either. Uh, what was it? Kind of related to the same thing. I'm trying to remember. I'll look it up because then I'll probably get content ID claimed. Uh, to find you. Oh, I remember now. Uh, the part where she says, "I'm a rebel, I rebel." That's not in the movie either. They do the part where. They're listing all the, the crimes she's done against the Empire. But she doesn't say I'm a rebel or bell. So... I guess there's just a ton of content in this movie. That's the only theory I can make. 
But uh, I think that about covers my thoughts. Like I said, I do love it. It's basically Star Wars porn. You should just you should watch it just for the other stuff. It has writing problems. I would have wrote it differently, but I'm not the writer for Star Wars. But it was way, way better than Force Awakens. A million percent better than Force Awakens. So, uh, yeah, give it a watch. If anything, just do it for K2. Yeah, he's 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 worth seeing. <laughs> and also do it for the uh, Star Destroyer porn. Star Destroyers are amazing. But anyway, I'll just let this video wrap up. That's a B. Oh, there it goes. I uh, hope you all enjoyed, and have a good day.